me so close And I don't wanna take a trail in the world But I gon' love you Yeah, I'm gon' love you I'll give you the world of what I've got The fancy finest, baby, I have not Just gonna love you Last week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we sailed from our Marimar to Cartagena. We caught some fish, we had a beautiful night at anchor, but then it all started to go downhill when we heard this awful noise from underneath the boat. We didn't know where it was coming from, the engine, the propeller, we weren't sure. It was a loud, vibrating roar. Nick dove on the prop when we were under sail, couldn't see anything, and uh, we still hadn't come up with a diagnosis. So the next morning, we decided the best and most prudent course of action was to dive on the prop, take a good look. We've got scuba gear on board, and we'd rather do this sort of work while we're in a marina than when we're at sea. Our second dive proved to be a good idea. We found that a small piece of line had got itself welded around the prop and now had to be cut away. So thankfully we carry pony scuba gear, so a bit of a shout out to, to Mantis for that, because it's useful to have on board. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm gonna go down. Teresa's gonna watch me because we don't have a buddy. Make sure that if I get into any strife, she can come and get me. I'm gonna have to jump in the water and drag you out. Right. Well, there's a dive knife there in case you need to cut me out free from anything, yeah? All right. Is there anything else to add to this gear? <laughs> like a cave diver. Good luck, baby. So I need you sat here, Yep. Yeah. So once we've dived on the prop, you can see that the thin nylon line has wound itself around the gap between the propeller and the prop shaft. As the prop turns, it heats up and melts the line. The line then welds itself to the prop shaft. This needs to be removed in very small pieces using a Stanley knife and a chisel. Nick is underneath the boat at the moment. This always uh, makes me a bit nervous when I can't see him. But at least I can hear him, I can hear the bubbles. So I know he's still breathing. Um, so just to recap the series of events, so I don't think we've been quite clear about that. Day one, we got some nylon rope caught in our prop. Nick dove under the boat, tried to cut as much of it away as he could, and uh, thought that he succeeded in that fairly well. Day two, we are sailing along, motor sailing along actually, and um, suddenly we hear this like insanely deafening vibration. Like you know how an aeroplane going overhead is like a vibrating sound, but it's like a roar. That is the sound, but it was coming from underneath our boat and it was utterly terrifying. I was in the cockpit by myself um, Nick was downstairs and just on pure instinct I jumped up and I put the engine into neutral and as soon as I did that the noise stopped. We couldn't work out what it was, didn't even know if it was the engine, couldn't, had no idea, never heard anything like that before. 
um, coming from the boat. It was just really scary. Day three happens again, twice in about an hour. And that's when we realized that something was wrong. Nick went downstairs to inspect the engine. He felt that the stuffing box was really, really hot to touch. And uh, so now we've been in kind of diagnosis mode. I'll let him pick it up from here because he's the one been doing all the tests and um, he's the one currently underneath the boat um, trying to sort it all out so but that's the series of events that happened and um, yeah pretty stressful but hopefully we'll be able to sort it write the Nina letter. A letter. Do you want a synopsis? I want you to explain the letter comment. Considering you're not like living in the 50s. I think you're a pigeon. <laughs> it's the first time we've actually used scuba gear in anger. Yeah. Um, ever. So the problem is that this thin polyprop, literally, if you look at this, like you feel how thick that is. Yeah, God, that is thick. And that's just a bit of it. Yeah. So there's like literally about three or four mil of just solid plastic that's blocking, that was just getting stuck around the, between the prop and the shaft. So I cut that off and unwound it all. I and mean, that's part of it. Don't forget, I took a load off the mm. other day. So how does that explain why the um, stuffing box was so hot? Because the water, the inside of the, the stern tube has got flutes in it and the flutes draw water up okay, to so cool everything. It. So okay. it just blocked it, it just yeah. blocked the water into it. So basically there wasn't enough water getting through. Mm. But we'll have to just monitor it. But I'm kind of hope, kind of like cautiously optimistic that this was the problem mm. and it's gonna go away now. If it doesn't go away, we'll have to have the boat hauled and that'll be our sailing done until we can get it fixed. Glad we had scuba gear on board. So what cool. was causing the vibration? I, that I don't know. I, I, I have no idea what that is. I can only assume it's like it's either just like friction stopping it, mm. and it's just trying to turn, and it's pulling. Stopping and it, what the prop from spinning. Yeah. Okay. And it's just the yeah. I'm hoping hoping that's okay. The other thing is I need to now monitor the water ingress to make sure when we're mm. sailing that we mm. don't have like loads of water pissing because mm. I loosened the nuts every time this morning. Anyways. Anyway, that's. That's, that's what I'm happy. I'm and happy we got that done. And this is now the set of our cockpit. <laughs> so, I don't think we're particularly good YouTubers right now because we have been here in Cartagena for almost a week, five days, six days, and we're leaving the day after tomorrow, and we have done no filming at all. We haven't even really done much work. I've done a little bit of editing on an episode that's really annoying me. I won't tell you what it is because I don't want you to be prejudiced against it, but it's just not coming together. We haven't done any sightseeing. We have barely cleaned the boat. We certainly haven't done any filming. The reason for all this is because we have just been having way too much fun. A, relaxing here in Cartagena, but B, we have had three sets of people, three sets of lovely followers come and buy us a beer, take us out for lunch, take us out for a sail. Uh, we had a really lovely couple uh, take us out on their lagoon and we had a very very lovely man from uh, the UK drive down from his kind of mountain home uh, the day that we got here and take us out and for a walk around uh, the city. And uh, yesterday we had another couple who have their boat here, not here here like about an hour's drive away. Um, they're port bound like everyone else in this part of Spain. And um, yeah, they came and drove and saw us and you know, it was like meant to be a beer, a, a pre-dinner beer. And they ended up sleeping over on our new friends on the catamaran and uh, yeah, like 18 hours later, they're still hanging around, <laughs> which was awesome. So yeah, we tried to go out this morning um, to do some filming and to like do some touristy things and show you guys and Monday it turns out everything's closed so nothing was open so we turned around and came back to the boat so yes 
tomorrow we will try and do better there's a roman amphitheater there's a roman forum there's like some really awesome uh things to see so we want to go and see them and appreciate them and uh yeah take you guys along for the journey so we're going to do that tomorrow i promise but in the meantime we are just slowly working slowly relaxing nick's gone to do some laundry and uh yeah i'm gonna get on with this episode that's really doing my head in so wish me luck and um we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning for a lovely walk into town so we should explain to people what we're doing we are <laughs> in Cartagena. now it is meant set mid-september and as you can probably see from the light behind us it is now cloudy so we're getting the occasional cloudy day which is some relief because this time last week it was unbearably hot and humid yes you've just heard us whinging about how warm it is all the time so now we can whinge about how cloudy it is so we're actually really happy for it to be cool yes Anyway, Cartagena is, uh, as we may have mentioned, it's a two and a half thousand year old city, which kind of blows my mind. Um, first adopted by the Phoenicians in 300 BC, and then <laughs> the Romans turned up and did all this amazing stuff. And the thing about this is that the amazing stuff is still here. There's a 2000 year old amphitheater. So we're gonna do a little bit of sightseeing today. We have to leave tomorrow or the day after. We really need to get moving to try and get up to our port for winter mm -hmm. so we've got a couple more a couple of hundred miles to do we're going to try and day sail it but in the meantime what we are going to do is go and show you the sights of this beautiful spanish city so here we are in the old town and um yeah it's like made up of like a one long shopping street and then lots of little side streets coming off of it and the buildings are really interesting because you've got like all these historic buildings right next to the buildings that are obviously quite modern shall we go and see the uh the, the roman theater came here yesterday and it was closed so yes in we go you want to do ones? No, because we, no, thanks. Is there the, is there the forum? I'd like to see the forum. Do you want to see the forum as well? Okay. We'll have two for the everything. Stuff. Some of this stuff is 2200 years old. So, just to put that in perspective, or say it a different way, that's 2200 years old. And the, the quality of this stuff is greater than many civilizations on earth today. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it that 2200 years ago they had central heating, they had kind of indoor plumbing, they had all sorts of mad stuff? Like, crazy stuff. 2200 years ago. Blows my mind. I said that a lot, this blows my mind, 2200 years. And you go back to like ancient Egypt, they were going around 5,000 years ago and doing mad stuff. But look, these people had trade routes, like 2,000 years ago yeah. they had trade routes, they had like you know, a whole network of things, they were trading with North Africa, the Roman Empire, the, you know, the Byzantine Empire, prior to that, the Phoenicians had gone as well. It's nuts, it's yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy. Look at this, right? So, that was, hammered out 2,000 years ago, right? I've seen people's boats with far worse graphics than that. <laughs> Why can't you paint your boat name straight when they could do it 2,000 years ago? It's just laziness. <laughs> <laughs> So in our continually expanding education, uh, this is a, a Roman, it's a forum and a thermi, so it's Roman baths. So those, I kind of think, were, they were like blocks to hold a, a false floor and they ran hot water and kind of steam underneath the floors. 
You think they had like steam bars and saunas that were, had hot air and hot water pumped underneath them 2,000 years ago. It's nuts. It's nuts. I can't even get our water pump to work. <laughs> yeah, it's just a crazy, crazy place. Just to have the original paintwork still in place. Um, Mind-blowing and, you know, why you should all, if you're not European, come and visit Europe because it is just nuts. Steeped in history, beautiful, food's good, lovely and cheap, weather's good, what else do you want? So just to put a little bit of a nautical but yet slightly tongue-in-cheek spin on this, this paintwork, this paintwork is two and a half thousand years older than our anti-foul and it's in better condition than our anti-foul. So, watch on. Well, my little uh, Cartagenian chicken pie, <laughs> We have come to the end of our time, almost our time here in Cartagena. So it's been, well, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love the heritage. I love the culture. I love the Roman stuff. I love all the architecture, the archaeology. Other things that start with archi. <laughs> archi beer? <laughs> archi beer. Anyways, uh, we yeah, loved it here. Been really lovely, but it's time to go. We are in coming into the shoulder season. Summer's over, we're now firmly into fall or autumn as we say. And that means that winds are becoming variable. We're getting kind of like three days of easterlies, then a westerly, and then... So we need to pick our weather windows a little bit more carefully. We don't have established weather patterns at the moment. Anyways, we have um, a two-day weather window or three-day weather window to get ourselves further along the coast. We only have 200 miles to go until our marina for wintering um, and we've got a month to do it in. Yeah. So that's it, that's where we are. So we've got 30 days to do 200 miles. Um, we're just going to... People gonna... What? Oh, Jesus effing Christ, you and your massive, massive jinxiness. I'm not a jinx. I think you just think that I'm... Jonah, they call her Jonah, for she is a Jonah. We're coming to our favourite square in uh, in Cartagena. What's this square called? Uh, San Francisco Positive. Plaza Plaza San Francisco. I'm just going to pan you around there. Look at this, right? It's amazing. The thing is, if you, Teresa hasn't already mentioned, these are rubber plants. Like rubber plants. They're like the type of things that you had when you were at college that died and had one <laughs> insipid looking leaf on it. These things are like monstrous. So yeah, our final evening here, we're going to go for a couple of very nice beers and then... Uh, this is what I love about Spain. So, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What you love about Spain? I love that we're just in this like public square, and then like behind us, there's just all these children just having an amazing time. I don't think I think it's an organised thing, but still, like you see that everywhere in Spain, families out, children out, all, right. all these kind of public spaces. Oh, it's amazing. It is amazing, and I do love the kind of whole cultural yeah. thing magic. Anyways, <laughs> well, <what>? it's beer time. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Next week on Sailing Ruby Rose, well, I mentioned it earlier in this episode and now you get to watch it. We went for a sail on a Lagoon 400 and believe it or not, we had some thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you like what we do and you want to see what we do every week, then please hit that subscribe button. Cheers, bye.